My gosh, this is the year of the Disney remake, isn't it? We've got five live action remakes coming out this year and I am less than excited. It seems that all these live action remakes Disney has been making based off their original classic animated movies has left much to be desired. Except for Dumbo. Dumbo was good. But for the most part, everybody can agree that most of these movies have not been as good as the originals. And it's not even that they've been that bad. It's not even that most of them have been that bad. It's just makes sense because Disney's movies have been so good, it's next to impossible to produce a remake that's as good as the original. There are reasons for that, but fortunately for you, Disney, I've come up with a surefire formula to get your audience back to loving your remakes and giving you bucket loads of money, as opposed to them to not loving your remakes and still giving you bucket loads of money, because Disney basically owns us now. This is how Disney can make the perfect live action remake. The first ingredient to making the perfect live action remake is to choose the right story. Some stories work better for animation, and some work better for live action. When Walt Disney made Cinderella, he didn't use the story as it was told to him. Rather, he decided to tell the story he saw. Rather than a story about a poor girl who was made to work for her evil stepmother, then got rescued by a prince, he told a story about talking mice who helped that poor girl. He wanted to use the story for his animation. And every element, every line, every movement, every cartoony facial expression on those talking animals was something that could only be done in animation. The movie was made so Walt Disney could showcase his craft rather than tell a character-driven story. But when you try to remake that exact same story, it doesn't work. Instead of being a charming story about a girl and her mice friends, it becomes a story about a girl and her mental health problems. Oh, Tosca, you're a house mouse, not a garden mouse, isn't he, Jacqueline? And you mustn't eat Mr. Goose's food. Isn't that right, Mummy? Do you still believe that they understand you? Don't they, Mother? Oh, yes. I believe that animals listen and speak to us if we only have the ear for it. That's how we learn to look after them. Who looks after us? Fairy godmothers, of course. And do you believe in them? I believe in everything. Then I believe in everything, too. <laughs> but what stories work in live action? Usually most people would think darker, grittier stories. You could go that route. Remaking Pinocchio or The Black Cauldron and scaring the living crud out of your audience. Or you could take another route and make more grounded stories. Looking at the explosion of live action movies Disney made in the 1960s, you can see what kind of stories they felt needed live action in the first place. They weren't fairy tales taking place in an unnamed kingdom with talking animals and magical spells. Rather, they were stories about ordinary people in real life situations, making it all the more interesting when they had to deal with a fantastical element introduced into their normal everyday world. But it's not enough just to choose the right story. Once you've decided that you want to tell a story in live action, you need to make sure that you play to live action's strengths. When a Disney remake tries to copy a classic animation sequence in a realistic way, it always comes out underwhelming. That's because the best things in animation are bright colors and fantastic larger than life images and motions that we can never see except in classic hand-drawn animation. Consequently, a live action remake that tries to make things more realistic by using unsaturated colors and limited movement, it will always naturally be less fun. Unless that live action sequence features elements that are inherently more fun when seen in live action. So what are those elements that are inherently more fun when seen in live action? Well, there are several different things. The biggest two I can think of were one, the use of live people, and two, the presence of action. First, the people. When you look at Disney's first live action movies, you see that they got all these great actors, especially on the comedic side. Fred McMurray, Don Knotts, even Dick Van Dyke. It's people like these that really make their movies shine. And even though you could capture their voices, only in live action can you get their expressions, their timing, their physicality, and all their little improvised moments. So what Disney needs to do for their remakes is find some big talent, 
I said big talent, not big names. And instead of hiding them behind a sound booth or covering them up with prosthetics and motion capture suits, they need to just let these actors be themselves and let us be entertained by their talent, rather than expect us to ooh and ah at the special effects. Also, the action. Two-dimensional animation can allow for some movement, but it is nonetheless constrained. We can find it impressive at times when Disney's been able to achieve large action pieces in their 2D movies, but they're never going to be as fun as a CGI or live action movie, where the camera can move in three dimensions and the audience feels that much more like they're experiencing the motion and the action for themselves. The last thing Disney needs to do for their live action remakes is very simple. Just do something different. This applies to all remakes, not just Disney, and it's kind of common sense. Nine times out of ten, the second time you watch a movie, it's not going to be as exciting as the first time you saw it. And so, if you're going to just remake the same movie with minimal changes, you're just expecting me to watch a movie for the second time and be just as excited, which never works. Disney, take a page out of Walt's book, where he saw a story, he saw a seed, and he took that seed and grew a completely different story, and we love his movies for it. All the classic Disney movies, the ones that are so popular they're being remade, they'd never be anywhere near as beloved if they'd stuck to the original source material. It's that same tangential relationship that makes a good remake, especially if that movie was originally made for animation. The live action remake needs to be a completely different picture, although it needs to be in a recognizable frame. So how should Disney go about making their next remake? Well, first they need to choose the right story, and if they want to make a live action remake of one of their animated movies, it ought to be a story that revolves around normal real world people dealing with fantastical elements, which would benefit from a more grounded feel. Thinking off the top of my head, what comes to my mind is Atlantis the Lost Empire. From what I remember, it was a pretty meh movie, which would give the screenwriters lots of room for improvement. But it follows the story of a regular Joe encountering fantastical elements, which would totally work as a live action movie. You'd also need to put in some really great actors, unfortunately there aren't really that many super talented celebrities these days, but you could find somebody. And Atlantis has a lot of cool sci-fi tech weapons and machines in it that would really provide for some great action sequences. And it'd be super easy to make something different out of this premise. All you need is a regular Joe from the 1900s going with a group of people to some lost city of Atlantis. And after that, you can take that story in a great number of different directions. So Disney, this is how you make a great live action remake from one of your animated movies. And take my advice, do the lost city of Atlantis. Just have uh, a guy from the ordinary world go down, find the lost city of Atlantis, and like use some big actors and big fun action sequences where the camera moves around and there's lots of explosions and things like that. I would pay good money to see that movie and I'd respect you for your originality.